Hey guys, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. Before I get into today's video, which is how to quickly teach you how to play Near and Far, one of my favorite games, I want to talk about a question that I saw on the board game Reddit earlier this week. The person asked, of your board game library, how many games do you know the rules to, can teach the rules to, and most importantly, how do you remember all the rules to your games? For me to answer that question, I need to tell you a little bit about my background. Um, my family, uh, specifically my siblings, we're apparently a group of writers. Uh, my sister has a food and travel blog, teriyakitalks.com, while my brother has written uh, for a few publishings, uh, including Sports Illustrated. Myself, I've been blogging for 15 plus years, but specifically work-wise, I'm a technical writer. I write training scripts and I write procedures for my company. So in that spirit, when it comes to board games, the way that I remember all the rules is by actually writing a script for them. And I store them all on my board game binder. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is because starting today, after today's video, you're going to see on my blog, nightknowledge.com, I'm going to have the actual scripts that you can read uh, to, to teach your friends. Because sometimes watching a video, no matter how good it is, it's still hard to teach people. So, by, so these are the scripts that I use whenever I t have to teach my friends how to play a specific game. And uh, I, I hope they help you out. Basically, I'm going to do it for near and far. I'm going to do it for the previous games that I've had videos on. And um, all future videos, I'm going to have uh, these, the training scripts that you'll be able to find on my blog. Once again, that is nightknowledge.com. But just a little thing I wanted to show to you today. Um, but let's get into the video. In Near and Far, we are adventurers looking for a powerful artifact that will grant our deepest desires. We do this by obtaining the most journey points by the end of the game. There are many ways to obtain such points, which we'll discuss at the very end. On a player's turn, they may do one of two things, go to a location in town or adventure outside of town. In town, there are a few different places a player may go to. The town hall, where they can do any and up to all three of either trade five items for one item or one item for up to five other items, discard one artifact card or sell any amount of gold and gems to increase or decrease the reputation. The saloon where you can purchase an adventurer of a specific faction for your active party per your player board which increases your health and various skills. The stables, where you can purchase pack animals that typically increase your speed on the map and can hold treasures that provide passive bonuses. The general store, which gives you one gold or the ability to draw up to four artifact cards. The farm, where you gain one food per skill symbol among your active party members, treasures, and purchased artifacts, which we'll call ATP. The Mystic, where you draw one treasure card if you own at least one pack animal. And the Mine, where if you have the appropriate amount of skill, once again, based on your active party, treasures, and purchased artifacts, can gain rewards based on the column and row that you're mining in. If you go to a space in town that another player is already at, you must duel them. The active player chooses to fight honorably or dirty. Both players roll one die and add their ATP of swords. If the active player fought dirty, they add one to their combat score and zero for fighting honorably. 
If the active player equals or surpasses their opponent, they earn one reputation if they fought honorably and lose one reputation if they fought dirty. Succeeding also allows them to conduct the action of the specific location. If the active player has a lower combat score compared to their opponent, they may spend health to increase their combat score. If they fail, nothing happens to their reputation, but they go to jail and their turn ends immediately. On their next turn, they may go to any town location and may choose to avoid dueling if another player is on that spot. If you choose to adventure when you're in town, you recalculate the amount of health you have based on the hearts in your ATP active party, plus any bonuses according to your treasures and purchased artifacts. You move around the map for a few different reasons. To complete quests by ending movement on quest spots and succeeding at either skill or combat checks, which earns you everything from coins, gems, reputation, or faction tokens. Players are able to place camps on one of the four trade routes by ending your turn on the specific space, spending three health, and placing a camp token from your player board onto it. Owning both parts or half of a trade route with another player earns journey points according to the map legend. Placing camps on either the gold symbol space or the gem symbol space earns you that reward according to the number of search symbols once again from your active party, treasures, and purchase artifacts. As a free action, every time it's their turn, a player may pay the cost of the artifacts in their hand to purchase the artifact and gain the passive bonuses of it. Artifacts are all worth journey points according to the top left of the card, and any unpurchased artifacts are worth minus one point each. Between spaces are sometimes one of two symbols, threats and treasure. If you move between spaces of threats, you will need to fight the threat that is currently face up. You roll a die and add any bonuses through ATP swords, if you equal or surpass the threat value, you succeed. Take the threat card, place a camp token on it, and at the end of the game, earn the journey points according to the threat card. You can decrease your health accordingly to beat a threat if your roll and bonus ATP is not enough. If you move between spaces of treasures, you draw a treasure card if you own at least one pack animal. If at any time camps are on both sides of a threat or treasure, it becomes inactive. Whenever you leave a space that you didn't start your turn on, you must pay one health. The benefit of placing camps is when you leave a space that you didn't start on that has a camp, it doesn't cost you health, whether you own the camp or is another player's. The end of the game is triggered when the first person uses their last camp token. At this point, any remaining players to the right of the player with the first player token takes their turn. Camp tokens are used in three different ways. Placing camps, as discussed previously on the map, after defeating threats, and by mining in town. At the end of the game, players calculate points in these ways. One point per camp token used, through their trade routes, the journey point value of their purchased and unpurchased artifacts, the value of their threats, some artifacts, treasure, and world cards are worth bonus journey points, one journey point for every two coins or gems, one journey point for every faction token, and five journey points for every chief which is automatically given to the first player that has four tokens of the same faction, whether it be through adventurers or faction tokens. Note that adventurers and food are worth zero points at the end of the game. If a player's reputation is positive, they earn journey points according to the scale. The player board has two bonuses, 
two journey points if they used every camp token and five journey points if they have three treasures which needs to be attached to their three pack animals. The player with the most journey points wins. Ties are broken with the player with the highest positive reputation. And if a tie still persists, the player with the most coins and gems wins. And those are the quick rules to near and far. I hope they helped you understand the mechanics of the game in a timely manner. Check out the rest of my channel for playthroughs on near and far and other videos on board games, video games, and tech. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.